What a ride, boys. What a ride. We'll keep going. Four play presented by Barstool Sports. We are back. We got a big show. We got Eric Van Royen on the show for about 30 minutes. Uh, big interview. We just won on the PGA Tour. Obviously, incredibly emotional. Uh, seems like just a fantastic guy. He's South African. So he's got the South African accent that Trevor uh, and all these guys have that's just delightful to listen to. He, uh, We're recording this Wednesday. So he said he was with his friend um who's very much about as sick as you can be does not have much time left they visited him yesterday so there was all kinds of emotions talking about the win um talking about working with sean foley which was fascinating there's some real funny tidbits in there and then obviously it's quite um quite emotional i i have a feeling i was thinking about it in the last 10 minutes since we finished that interview dan that um he seems like a guy that's going to pick off a major championship to me. Like he almost seems like a Trevor type guy or something who's going to yeah. have like five wins and one of them's going to be a random PGA championship. You know, not random, but it's like yeah. you don't pick them all the time. But yet when he's got it going, I don't know. He just kind of clicks to me. He's yeah, very well, calm he swings demeanor. it. He, he swings it beautifully. He's calm. And I can now that you're saying it, I can totally picture Dave Portnoy tweeting like, "Who the fuck is Van Royen? Yeah. And why is he, why <laughs> is right. he beating McElroy exactly. to win the tournament?" <laughs> I feel you on that. Uh, but yeah, so that's the, the, the second half of the show. Um, and he was just phenomenal. Great to listen to. Um, and then we've got the whole squad here. Uh, we got much to get to. We've got, what's our video coming out uh, today when people are listening? Today is nine at mine with Will Wilcox. Mm. And if people don't know the Will Wilcox story, uh, you might remember him. He played on tour for about five years. He had a hole in one, uh, on the 17th at Sawgrass, uh, which was like kind of his most famous moment. Um, I don't people didn't really know this at the time, but he he was a, a like a addict, big time addict while he was playing on the PGA Tour. We're talking doing drugs in the porter potties during tour events. So there's a Golf Digest article about it, um, but he's got a new chapter now. He's caddying for Sung JM. So he's had a, a, just a wild ride in golf, getting getting kicked out of, you know, UAB for I think he got two DUIs his freshman year. Uh, he tried to join the military. They wouldn't let him join the military because his record was too shitty. He went to some D3 school and started winning Alabama am gets the PJ tour flames out because of the drug use is back now caddy just a wild story and the guy is still of a heck of a golfer uh, so we played nine holes at Charleston Muni which is a really cool spot uh, and talked really just about a, a golf journey like like no other than I'm familiar with so that'll be on the channel um, 2 p.m I would guess uh, and give it a watch we're, we're a actually one. doing it's, Friday it's, we're doing Friday for that we're gonna try Friday right. afternoon tomorrow like, uh, yep okay Friday afternoon yeah we shoot the shit I interview him it's a lot of fun check it out Second ever uh, foreplay guest, Willie Wilcox. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, he's must got, have been just, February 2017. Must have been I'd that. Say, yeah, that that's probably his biggest moment in front of the the hole in one at, at, at right. 17. But right, yeah. it's kind of what one. most people know. That's awesome, him really. of, so. He was drinking uh, his own piss, right? No, no, that was Morgan Hoffman. Morgan Hoffman, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I like to find these kind of wild characters in golf. I There's, knew that you had a connection with someone that was drinking their own piss. I, I, yes. Morgan Hoffman was the one. Morgan Hoffman was drinking his own piss and, and tried to get me to ask me if I wanted to do it. I said no. Um, you did not. Drink yeah, his correct? or drink yours? I did drink my own <laughs> because of, you know, he said it's like an ancient thing where if you drink your own piss, it's cleansing and this, that, and the other. No, I man. opted against it. These stories are far more fascinating than they're just very different than what you yeah. would usually find on the PGA tour or in any sport or in any walk of life. Really. It's not, mm -hmm. you're talking about a guy who had an opioid addiction. You're talking about a guy who was in porta potties during PGA tour events, mm. doing drugs. Like I'd rather hear about those guys mm. than like those yeah. stories are far more interesting than like, Oh yeah, this guy came up through the system. He played in all these yeah. PGA events and it's all this interesting shit. It's like, no, no, there's some wild shit. It's like out a there dark going rock star story for a golfer, which you yeah. couldn't have, um, you know, more juxtaposition. I know we use that word a lot, but it really isn't. It's like country club guy, guy doing drugs in a porta potty, and like some. There's a moment where I ask him, really and I'm like, I'm like, hey, do you, do you do you have any regrets? And he's like, well, I was shaking, and then the drugs would make me stop shaking, and then I would play good. So I don't, mm, you know, that's right, kind of yeah. how it when went. It's tied to that, it's like, what yeah. do you do? Yeah, yeah. What do you do? You just keep you just keep cranking. Clearly, which he did. So, yeah. <laughs> you uh, just keep so yeah. Going. Uh, I got a new look last weekend at Chevrolet, just a whole different side of Chevrolet. We bought Chev Chevy gear, we Chevy hats, Chevy trucks, Chevy, Chevy everywhere at this NASCAR event that we were at. And it really, 
I, we talk about Chevy. We do the ad reads, do all kinds of videos about them, and they've been behind us for a year and a half or whatever it is now. Really just immersed ourselves in how iconic and longstanding Chevy's been doing it. Yeah, they're a titan. And they're a titan in a bunch of different areas, like EV, which is what we're talking about. Everybody should go check that out. That's the way of the future. But like you're saying, then you go to a NASCAR event, and Chevy is like, it's the gold standard for NASCAR cars. And it's it's just cool that they've touched all these different places, and they're still looking at the future, which is EV. Yeah, man, they've been making cars for 100 years, and you just kind of, we say that number, you know, we throw it out there, 100 years ago, 100 years ago, I mean... That is before so many things happened. That a hundred years ago was right after World War One. Like that, World War Two wasn't even a thought. So the fact that they've been making cars for that long, that we were just immersed in all of it with the merchandise and the gear and the drivers and how long they've been doing it, and then they've been in the EV game for a decade, charging. You might think if you're going to get into an EV car, an all electric car, uh, that you're worried about charging it up. Chevy's working incredibly hard to make charging simple. They got over 110,000 charging stations across the United States and Canada and growing. They got this energy assist feature, intelligently planning your routes, telling you where and how long to charge up, giving you real time data about charging station availability. So Chevy's doing it. They continue to do it. They've been in the forefront of the EV game. Go check them out at Chevy.com slash electric. You're going to see a bunch of the models that you've come to know and love and cherish and respect for decades now converted available in the ev model so go to chevy.com slash electric speaking of like drinking your own piss and trying to find miraculous ways to kind of cure yourself and recover uh tiger woods so tiger the latest from tiger is uh a couple different things that came out he in a stunning move i would say gave some quotes to the associated press uh, in which he spoke about his ankle. He said, uh, quote, my ankle is fine. Where they fuse my ankle, I have absolutely zero issue whatsoever. That pain is completely gone. It's the other areas that have been compensated for, all the surrounding areas where I had all my problems, and I still do. So you fix one, others have to become more hypermobile, big tiger word there, hypermobile to get around it, and it can lead to some issues I'm pretty sore after caddying for four days. It was a flat course, thank God. Uh, So uh, in in terms of those quotes, I don't really know what to make of that. I don't know what it means that the area that was fixed is just totally fixed now, but the other areas are bad. I don't don't know if that's good or bad. I I don't know. I really don't know. In that same article, he references that it was the same with his fusion fusion surgery. So this is something that he's not, um, this isn't, like surprising to him he knew that this was going to be coming he's used to this i also i just think he's setting expectations at some point you know i feel like there was a lot of hype and i don't know if he knows about the hype but there was a lot of hype about him walking i'm sure he heard about it everyone was taking videos of him every single day and i feel like he's just setting expectations of like i still am hurt i'm not fully recovered yet that was a very like tiger pr 101 move i felt to let people know like listen i'm not because if he goes out there and doesn't make the cut at the Masters or doesn't play at Riviera and all these things, like we're going to be like, why? You were walking perfectly at Charlie's event, carrying the bag for four days. So I feel like he's just bringing a little bit of um, reality into the situation for everyone just to set up the inevitable. If I have to WD from a tournament or something, it still hurts like a motherfucker. Four days caddying, I'm sore. I, I see right through this one. I it think also- that it's just setting expectations. I don't disagree with that, but it also, if he wins, it's like, man, this guy is still in pain. Yep. What a warrior. 100%, it works on dude. both levels. He's been doing this shit for My, a long time. He, he knows, knows storylines. The guy's a fucking, he's a producer of his own life. The yep. whole thing's yeah. a movie. My my biggest takeaway is why the fuck is he caddying four days in a row for Charlie if it's going to make him really sore? Like, but is being sore bad? The guy has like no know. leg. So it's like, is being it's sore, bad. like throw some ice on bad. it. Let's go. Let's right. move, so, move to the so next sore, one. So sore is different from pain, I, 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 I suspect. Yeah, right? like, yeah okay. Yeah. But still, and I, mean, I would he's rather have him do a dry like, run now and just, instead of this being the hero where he walks four days, 18 holes, let's do it at a Nota Begay event and see how we feel. And then we'll rev this thing dude, up. I'm for a sore real all the time. My toe is killing oh, me. I think I got the beginnings of turf toe. I'm sore as fuck after a round of golf. Doesn't mean I'm not going to play tomorrow. I do agree with you. I think this was definitely a response to how crazy people have been going about this. But I also think that the the more that I dig into the fact that he chose to carry Charlie's bag for four days walking a golf course 
That to me says, A, I know I can't get hurt more. Like this could be basically a test run. This is like when Tiger two weeks before the Masters two years ago, there were just videos leaking of him walking around medalist where everyone takes a cart 900% of the time. And he was just walking around medalist with Joe Cava. This reminds me of that where he's doing a dry run. He's walking, carrying Charlie's bag. He doesn't have to do that. He would not be doing that if he thought it was going to crack his leg in half or he thought that was going to set him back six months on his return to golf and dominance and winning major championships, which he's obviously going to do again. I think that this is a fantastic sign. I do agree these quotes. I think they're trying to tamper expectations a little bit. He's saying, I see everybody's going nuts, and it's a win-win for him to do that because if he comes out and just says, yep, I walked for four days, I feel amazing, really excited to get back to golf, then you know it's like any political debate that somebody goes into. You always want to set the bar low and dominate expectations. You don't want to set it high and then come up short of expectations because then all the storylines are that you're not as great as everybody thought you were. So I think he's doing that to a degree. But overall, from the quotes, it was a little bit kind of a non-factor for me. Great that the ankle part that got fixed is like still feeling like it's fixed and not hurt. So it was kind of neutral. But the fact that he just walked, the fact that he's sore and that he's not going to get in surgery again after four days of walking and carrying a bag, I think it's fucking fantastic. So you think he, odds are you think he plays hero? It's about one month from today, or do you think he's going to wait till Riviera? He, I don't know that he plays hero. I, I think that would be surprising. I think he plays the PNC again uh, because Charlie obviously loves that. They ride around in a cart. They do the whole deal. We go nuts. It's right before Christmas. Holidays is beautiful. I don't know that he plays. I did see that Ryan Burr, who like MCs and is like the media correspondent for this Nota Begay Invitational, and who. I have a great DM relationship with where we just get really hyped about Tiger Woods. I saw <laughs> that he had a quote where he said uh, that Tiger Woods is going to win the Genesis Invitational. <laughs> 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 and, it was, and it was a declaration like it's a fact. I mean, there was it was it was hard, it's hard not to get swept up in the whole in the whole <laughs> thing when you're staring at a sweaty Tiger Woods at, on a golf course. You know, he walked yeah. off that course being like, I'm going to tweet out that this guy's going to win the next tournament he plays. It's as simple as that. Well, also, yeah, Tiger doesn't have to say the things like you were saying. The, the the quote that came out was lowering expectations. He's got a whole media arm, a.k.a. us and everyone who loves Tiger, who is who are just going to say he's going to win every single tournament he plays. So he doesn't have to say things like that. He's not going to win another tournament ever. T yeah, that's just that's wrong. That's crazy. Uh, wrong. You're wrong. I feel what bad for you that you're going to be that wrong. You're going to be on wrong. that list. You're going to get, you know, you're going to be part of that compilation video that we put out that I have all of the receipts for when Tiger naturally wins again. And you're going to have to apologize. Ryan Burr tweeted out 22 hours ago, Tiger will win the Genesis, Genesis Invitational in a few months. His legs are getting stronger every day. His number one priority is his family <laughs> and being a good dad. He is a major champion in that category as well. The greatest nice. comeback story in the history of sport will soon get its newest chapter. Book it all capital letters. I, mean, I love this guy. guy. I was him tweets off, son. Come on, baby. Get him going. Uh, all right. So that's the latest uh, in the Tiger. Uh, well, well, actually, uh, we got to talk about the biggest Tiger news oh, ever. Yeah, I mean, this. True. We teased this on the last episode because you could hear me scream to Brendan, hey, is that video done yet? And I think we got into it a little bit. And I said, oh, I, I said, uh, there's a funny video that we just put out on our Twitter. If you had seen it today or yesterday, go check it out on our socials. Little did I know that when I hit tweet, right after that recording that it would go to 7 million people on Twitter. And that's just on mine. Dave has like 2 million on his tweet. The Barstool Instagram. I've the got Barstool over a million Twitter on over, my bullshit tweet. Bro, we're talking tens of millions of people More. have seen Trent and I talk of like just basically lip sync a 15 to 20 second clip of Tiger Woods and Sky talking about no divots. I don't know how that thing took off the way it did. But it fucking is on fire, man. So when we originally talked about doing it or after we had done it, our big question was, are people going to know this video? Like, obviously, in our world, that video was a right. top five, top three, probably number one video of the year. And so all, every, all the golfers knew about it, everybody. But who really knows all outside of that, like a no divots Tiger Woods, Scotty Scheffler video? <laughs> so we just decided to do it, put it out and just like, oh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's funny. And it just fucking exploded flew even the, john feilberg tweeted he was like i don't know what this is about i don't even know what video they're referencing but the lip syncing is so good and it's so interesting <laughs> that i'm going to continue to watch it 50 times and that's the side, where it got all, the side by side one was stunning stunning we got a lot of tweets like how many takes did it take i'd say we went through the whole scene 
four or five times, I'd say. Probably five Andy times. And Riggs were out there, too. They were watching us do it, which was probably super The yeah. whole thing came together no, it was pretty very quickly. Funny. Like, Could, Brendan deserves a lot of credit. For sure. There, like, oh, this yeah. is where you got to stand. This is, I mean, was, yeah. I think people probably wouldn't realize that, like, that probably took an hour of filming that over and over again and it was worth it because that day a lot of a lot of lip sync stuff was coming out that day around sweaters and whatnot and if you just don't match up the lip syncing properly it just doesn't really work and when we teased this video in the last show we hadn't seen the final product yet nope and we finished the podcast and we came out and we said holy fucking shit the the lip syncing was perfect the angle changes were perfect like frankie's man like Dude. both you guys trent doing the deadpan scotty you were so good at that. And then Frankie doing the step in. And then the little, I, think, I knew you were getting so into it because you were doing the little like hunchback hmm thing. Yeah. Was... <laughs> no, dude, listen, my Scotty was fine. People were being very nice about it. It's it's a Frankie Borelli performance of a lifetime. If you go back and watch it, it is uh. unbelievable how much he nails Tiger's mannerism. <laughs> I didn't really even realize it. And I knew it was good. I knew he was because he loved doing the. I mean, he's been doing that for six months every day, every time I see him. So I knew he was going to nail that. But watching the side by side, he becomes Tiger Woods for 35 seconds. It is un fucking believable. It really is. Have you guys seen those videos where it's like a, a band or a DJ finishes a song and they, they immediately know they have a hit on their hands? Yeah. And they're like, oh, shit, they start bumping. Frankie showed me that video. Do you remember Frankie? And I go, yeah. get that away from me. I don't ever want to see that video again. It's way too funny for me to process. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just, you knew you had to hit right away. Right I, away. I never know though. Like I, I've I been, I, I like felt like it was really good. The lip syncing was so good. The way that Brendan edited it was so good. That it was like, all right, that's very good. But if that had gotten like 350 likes and 20 retweets, I'd have been like, yeah, that makes sense. But then it gets almost a thousand retweets and almost 20,000 likes. The internet, you just never know what's going to blow up. You do your best. You put your best foot forward and you hope it's going to work, but you never really know. So to have something like that pay off, I think Dave said, he's like, this is underrated going to be one of the best pieces of content of the year, which the is year. which is such a nice thing to say. And it's you just never know what's going to work. And I'm just really glad that this one worked. You don't know. And you don't even know why a lot of the time. You're like, they're just lip syncing a really funny video. Why is that so funny? And it is fucking hilarious. I just... It's just a winner. It's that easy video to watch. Great. I don't know. It's just uh, this new, you know, it's it's similar to what we talked about with Grant Horvat, which that video is also live on our YouTube. Make sure you go check it out if you've missed it. Got a bunch of tweets saying that this one guy said that he wa has watched every single video we've ever put out. He said, like, I've watched 724 play pieces of content and I couldn't find a Grant video on my YouTube. So something was happening with that, which was weird. He's like, the algorithm is keeping the man down. Um, it's, do it's doing okay, though. It's doing okay. It's just that was a weird tweet. Um, and then... Uh, what we talked about with Grant was like you can you can have these amazing ideas where like you fly to fucking Scotland and play St Andrews and you spend you know thirty thousand dollars on production and it's like a fully produced incredible video of like you playing the old course and maybe you interview someone that like came out of the ground or whatever I don't know like it's something crazy could happen and that could get a hundred thousand views and then we just take. 30 minutes to like do a lip sync video of a video that's six months old and it gets 10 million views yeah. that to me is like almost a little fucked you know oh it's it it really fucked it's very fucked. it's like how is that even possible you know we've done yeah. some great content this year and that was the best of the year it's like, Bro, we went know. down we went down and filmed with shane lowry and did like a whole yeah. thing and it's like <laughs> right. uh, fart in the wind compared to that yeah. video it's but, it is scary. It's a scary world. I mean, I'm glad that we hit both. I'm glad that we got that video, that right. lip sync video. But it's yeah, you just never know what's gonna go and what's not. Excellent work. That's just a really, it's just a really, really good video. And you know, kind of the in, it's kind of disguised as a promotional video for our sweater. So if you haven't got Dude, it in the, the video yet. that has like it has a million views on Instagram now, like our link is just on. It's on TaylorMade. So hopefully we push. Yeah, a bunch TaylorMade of sweater. shared it. Yeah. Would, and the sweaters yeah. again if we reach that goal on black friday so this whole entire this i, I think we talked about this on the last episode yeah. but mm -hmm. the bonus money which usually goes to you know the workers or dave or whatever it's now going to all the production and behind the scenes guys so the fact that this one took off i know brendan and alex and all those guys were pretty pumped up that this thing was flying i, I was with brendan that night as it was like dave retweeted and he's like let's fucking go dude this mm -hmm. thing is flying 
There's and so nothing, hopefully we sold a bunch. Just nothing like that dopamine rush. I was no. We went to you were after. you were high as a kite in that car. Dude, I was yeah. stoned. I was the dopamine was flowing through my brain, and it's you know it's it's not the healthiest thing. I, I get that. It's not what you want to be the thing where it's like this is where the pleasure comes from. But a uh, a ripper tweet, a ripper video. That's just where my brain starts to just float and just it feels amazing. If you're in this business, you do want that to be where your pleasure comes from. That's just, yes. you know, it's you're chasing that all day long, all week long. So uh, excellent work. <laughs> what a fucking video. Um, and yeah, go to store.barstoolsports.com. Click the foreplay area and get our uh, sweaters. We've got them mm -hmm. on our uh, ugly sweaters for the holiday season. Not generic to any particular, you know, holiday, just holidays in general coming up. You're going to want to be prepared for that. Hygiene and grooming, important. important, important, very important. You simply have to just do it. You have to clean yourself. You have to manicure yourself. You have to use deodorant upon yourself. And we've got at Barstool uh, a solution to if you stink or you're just unkempt. And it's called Wood, W-O-U-L-D. It's a lineup of men's personal grooming products made of all natural ingredients and specially formulated to make you smell like a better man. This is, we're talking body, hair, face, beard products. Barstool worked with an icon in sort of the grooming hygiene industry and created all these fantastic products from face wash, beard, all that stuff. Wood grooming, it's great stuff. Yeah, I've been using it. It's really good. Uh, my whole entire shower is filled with it now. All the products. I've been using the deodorant. I actually used it out in NASCAR. It was my first time using it. I used it out in NASCAR in Arizona, 100 degree day. It was crazy hot out on the track, on the pavement, on the, uh, what are they calling that? What are they calling track? that? Yeah, but what are, what's the um, asphalt? That's, it's on the asphalt, I guess, right? Mm. And um, I was a little bit nervous. Like when you try a new deodorant, especially a natural deodorant, it's not an antiperspirant. You're like, I was kind of nervous about it. I, I think I smelled great. I got back to my hotel room and I mean, you guys would have smelled me. You would have you would have yeah, realized if I was, end. there was no yeah. issues. I felt great. My body felt good. And the fact that I was using something that was natural in such harsh conditions really has now propelled me into like, oh, this is my deodorant now. You know what I'm saying? I was able, yep. I threw it right into the fire and now I'm able to just use this for the rest of my life. Uh, you can check out the natural products aisle at your local Walmart and shop Woods Hair and Body Assortment today. It's time to smell like a better man. I love their face. They got this face wash and they've got this face scrub, they call it. That's the slightly grainy stuff that exfoliates Exfoliating. your face. Oh, really, really good. So they got a bunch of products, like we said. Go check out the natural products aisle at your local Walmart. Shop Woods Hair and Body Assortment today. It's time to smell like a better man. All right, I want to let Alex Bush know that I decided to tail Dave Portnoy, and I have done a future bet on the Bengals to win the Super Bowl. Uh, I don't nice. want to talk about that for too long, but I just, Joey B, I like him. I've always liked him. He just does it for me. He's just, you know, he's like a sex icon in the, in the NFL now. <laughs> They're finding themselves. He's a fucking mm -hmm. winner, LSU, the whole deal. I saw that from Dave, who's historically a horrific game. Just horrific and for whatever reason i saw that i tailed it and got excited so i'm on that and then i also just have to give another shout out to mr ice if you're not following elio on twitter right now he posts he doesn't do it every day he's, he's a little bit selective but he does nhl overs on total goals he's been doing it for a few years now and he has he takes he took the whole summer off there's just no nhl game so he basically takes it off he does a little bit of horse racing here and there, but he essentially just doesn't give picks until the NHL is back, and then he gives overs, and he has started red fucking hot. So if you're <laughs> looking for winners, you simply have to follow Mr. Ice. You got to buy some merchandise. Of his three plus three equals seven, because if they get to three, they cannot tie in hockey. They go to overtime. They go to shootout. Somebody's going to get to four. So in the over numbers, the over under is almost always six and a half. Another winner last night. It was kind of an easy one. Uh, and yeah, he's just, you got to tail him. He's fucking, he's a winner. Uh, they were at shirts. the Breeders' Cup. They were at the Breeders' Cup and uh, they were losing every single bet, Dave and Elio. And then there's a video that Dave posted where he's just slowly taking a white t shirt out of his briefcase. Like, he doesn't even know that Dave's filming him, but he's just slowly taking a white t shirt out of his briefcase. He has to go to the bathroom and rip it off. 
That was one of the funniest videos of the year for Dude, me. Dude, one of the funniest videos of those two is when they were on a private jet and Miss Rice was watching one of the games and one of the overs hits. And Dave is panning to Elio, who's ripping a shirt into his phone, looking at it. Yeah. And Dave pans to the pilot, and the pilot's looking back, like, "What is going on back there?" <laughs> well, Elio is a wild man. There's another. There's two other stories that always get me. And the other one, the, one of them is that um, they were at a super nice restaurant, like a like a clubby restaurant in Miami. Dave took them out, and some guy. So so Elio goes to the bathroom. And some guy comes up to the table and Dave, he goes, bro, what's going on in the bathroom with your buddy right now? And Dave just starts dying because I guess like Elliot didn't tell anyone, but like the Minnesota wild had like hit the over and like in the middle of this insane dinner and he had to go rip his shirt off in like a five-star restaurant. And then the other one was, uh, Dave tweeted out, uh, that I guess him and Silvano were just like laying in bed one night, at, like 1030 at night and Elio was staying over. And she, he's like, he said that Silvano was like, what is that screaming downstairs? And Dave just calmly goes, oh, the Ducks must have scored another goal or something. And it was just <laughs> chaos happening in the basement. Um, he's the best. Elio is the absolute best. Speaking real quickly about the Minnesota Wild, I mean, the New York Islanders are on kind of a slide right now. They can't get it done. They have like a minus five goal differential in the third period. It's a really frustrating team to watch right now. They're winning every single game going into the last like 10 minutes, and then they just lose it. It's a real hard place to be where you're like, oh, this team is like, destined to be they've they've played well enough to be like nine and three they've lost three overtime games by heartbreakers those would have been three wins if it just flips the other way and then three of their losses have come from like leading the game and then losing in the third period so it's a frustrating place to be they have the chances to win and they're losing really really frustrating um i gotta give a shout out unfortunately to my guy Vinny letary he's been on this channel a bunch we've done like four videos with Vinny. He was kind of bouncing around the league. He was with the Rangers. He got a good start. Then he went to Boston last year, had a really tough season where he got, he was, he finally got called up and then like broke his foot during pregame like practice. Yeah, that sucked. Missed the whole entire season. Didn't, you know, he hasn't scored a goal in two years because he didn't play last year. Playing, he gets, he signs with his hometown Minnesota Wild. And he's a huge Minnesota guy. Had the whole family, the Lou Nanny, who I've talked about a lot. I called him Luke Nan. He's like the godfather of Minnesota hockey. Last night, Vinny Letary scores the game tying goal against all of his buddies, Anders Lee, Brock Nelson, Hudson Fashing, all the guys that he's best friends with. Um, scores the game tying goal, his first goal in a while. And Lou Nanny was announcing the game. He's the play by play announcer, 82 years old. So, wow. he, his, his, dude, his call is awesome. He's like, Vinny Letary shoots, he scores and a fist pump upstairs. Cause like he fist pumped. It's just such an old time, awesome, like grandpa calling his grandsons goal like and and butchergrass from espn tweeted this out imagine imagine being able to call your grandson's hockey game in the nhl think about That's how many sick. things have to go right for that you have to be yeah. like healthy enough and your brain has to keep firing to be a play-by-play -play announcer at 82 years old your grandson has to make it to the nhl and score a goal and now you can dissect that that goal on tv that's just has to be the first time that's ever happened i mean that's a one in a billion so that yeah. was pretty cool, even though it came at the, you know, the Islanders just got crushed by them. So it is what it is. <laughs> cool, though. It's a bummer, but no. Uh, yeah. That Great is extremely guy. cool. Yeah. Uh, the Blues are 500. I'm just worried there's going to be a 500 yeah. team. It's a bummer. It's not that exciting. No. Uh, Islanders are still like, they're what? Five, three or something like that? They're five, they three, and with... three. It's just like I said, it's, there was a time where like you, you dissect every game. It's like they were, they could have been nine and two. It's like they really were winning every game. Goaltending was great. They're giving up a lot of shots, so it feels like they're getting outplayed, but they're still in the game. It's just, you know, it's early in the season. We got to get the guys going. We got to get the guys going. We'll be uh, all right. The uh, Rangers are a fucking problem right now, but that is my really Hawkeyes is. demolished Danny Rapp's Northwestern. Oh, Ooh, what a barn burner. Team. Just a barn burner. Zero zero at halftime. 15 and a half over under live Ooh. line at halftime. <laughs> fucking absolute <laughs> shootout. <laughs> I didn't know wasn't that. Wasn't it the lowest, it the lowest over wow, ever? Dude. And it never How does Iowa keep close? doing this? How does Iowa it, keep doing this? There's not bro, one game know. that there's not one game where it just like goes the way you don't think it's gonna go. They don't like no, no, no. score thirty eight points, forty five points. Like no, dude. But like not have, one we, game. We they're capable, no, they're no, capable no, of it. They have You're, that Michigan quarterback, don't they? I mean, no, he got hurt. He's out for the year. Oh, he's out for the year. They were bad. They were kind of bad with him, but now our quarterback. I mean. Uh, the backup to the backup right now had to have committed war crimes. The fact that we're not playing him. <laughs> it's the, the, we keep, I know, you know, he seems like a nice guy, the guy we're playing, but he is horrific. And no, the, yeah, the over under for the Iowa Northwestern game 
when it started was 29 and a half, which was the lowest in oh college God. football history. <laughs> and then they're close. playing Rutgers this weekend, and I think it's 29. So Iowa just keeps setting records for being the lowest over unders in in sports history. But they're seven and two. Like they're gonna end up winning the Big Ten West, and they're gonna play fucking Michigan in the Big Ten championship and lose 150 to nothing. Like I'm not even kidding. That, <laughs> I went two years ago, Dave and I went when Iowa was once again a team like this where we don't have an offense, but the Big Ten West is so bad that they end up winning a bunch of games to qualify for the Big Ten Championship. And then the East has Michigan, Ohio State, and all these teams where they just beat up on each other. They show up in the Big Ten Championship. And Dave and I left before the third quarter started because it was like, this game is over. Like, we're leaving. (laughs) So. Yeah, that's going to the march to the slaughterhouse is exciting for the Iowa Hawkeyes right the, now. But. If Iowa wins the Big Ten championship, do they get into the 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 top four playoffs or no? No, you got to be in a position to like you have to play well enough. I don't right. think it's not like a guaranteed spot if um, if I'm understanding. But maybe the next correctly. year, right when they have the they're going to like eight teams. Yeah, I yeah, think they're next changing year, it up next year. I think next year the conference champion is going to get if you're one of the Big Five. I think gets in automatically. Okay. I think that's probably yeah. right. But yeah, no, I was there's no way they're gonna like sneak into the four. Michigan I mean, is next so year I actually think is gonna be so I, I wonder how like college football fans, diehard college football fans feel about this switch up because I've seen a lot of people I guess they don't love that it's gonna be expanded because it doesn't make it as important. But I know a lot of people are saying that they like that first round because you get to actually have home games as opposed to um neutral uh, sites. You get to see yep. like an Ohio State play in Alabama. That's cool in alabama possibly you know what i mean like that for like a playoff really, game that's for a playoff game you get to see teams that usually don't play usc right. versus a, you know a michigan like how does that go and yeah i think that's gonna be really cool i actually i would now that i've said it i don't know if anyone is opposed to it why why would you be opposed to that it sounds like the coolest that thing seems ever. awesome more that teams awesome the playoffs is always better yeah. it does seem I, awesome i was uh, but they're good so that's just kind of what it is uh do you guys uh listen to the Elon on Rogan. Yeah. Yes. I did. No. Uh, a couple things. One is it, he kind of got fight talked like Dave did when Dave was on there. Dude, a little why bit, does which he always talks about that? It's everybody like, knows it. Rogan, look, Rogan's the king. He's the biggest, but it's the oh, it's the biggest negative by far. Is like if you ever Caleb called it like Dave got Dave was victimized by it. If you just <laughs> give him a little bit to go down the fight talk road. It's over. And it was a bummer because the two and a half hours or whatever that they had, like an hour of it was spent on him, Rogan, just mm-hmm. going nuts about fight talk and being like, have you seen this guy? This guy's the bet. He's a bit. And you're just like, it was even right. worse than that, dude. He was like just calling out care. Elon for not knowing certain Ugh. like Elon was like, oh, I think because Elon's trying to fight Zuckerberg, which is not going to happen anymore because he fucking like popped his Achilles or his ACL or something like that. Mm-hmm. But um. He's like, oh, I'll put him in a one arm bar or whatever. And Brogan's like, um, you actually can't get that from that position. Like he was just acting like the fucking the the greatest fighter of all time. Like I get it. Like I know that you know the moves. I know that you announce UFC, but like let the best fucking Dude. our generational mind that's sitting across from you just speak about AI. Let him yep. talk about AI. Let him talk about Tesla. Let him talk about rockets going to space. And we're yeah. here doing an hour and a half about arm bars. And I was yeah. like, get the fuck out. And Elon was doing exactly what Dave did. He was trying to give him short one word answer. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, come oh. on, man. Ask me something interesting that I fucking know everything in the world about. <laughs> and he just like, couldn't get there. And there was a good, there was a, and like, even at the fucking end, he finally asked, like, because he's going to this conference about AI in London, and he finally kind of asked, like, what's your, what's kind of your takeaway tr- going to be from this meeting? And he's, and he's like, I got to go in five minutes. He started to give a pretty good answer, and then it was over. And I'm like, dude, we didn't need. So that was a bummer. I thought that was incredibly disappointing. And I know we've talked about it on the show before, but man, when he just goes down that vortex, it's over. You can't get out of it. The end of that podcast was really daunting and scary, actually, because he's about to head to this like conference about AI safety and all the leaders of the technology world are heading to this place, wherever it was, like France or something like that. And and uh, I think Rogan asked him a very general, open-ended question like, what are you going to take away from this? Or what's your goal to take away from this meeting? And Elon Musk stares into the distance for a total of like four straight minutes. And he's trying to collect his thoughts. And he's like, I don't, he, at one point he goes, I don't know. 
Yeah, he did. Dude, the guy that's like leading this thing has no idea how to control the AI system, like the, the AI situation. He's he wants- he's a he's cautious about it too, though, which is interesting. Like he he, you could definitely hear that there's some fear in his voice. Like he he almost there's oh, a, he's a ton of fear. There's, he's, there's, like, he's on the side AI. of like You've we need to slow to- down. We got to get control of this. No, be, but but if you listen to like the last time he was on there two years ago, or so they he, they go for like an hour on it. He makes incredibly concerted points about this and i thought an amazing point that he made during this one was where he was like look humanity is the dominant species on earth and he's like it's not because we're the strongest like a gorilla would just beat the fuck out of the strongest person yeah, here this is cool it's like it's not like we're the fastest there are a million creatures that are just faster than we are he's like we're the smartest and he's like so we we win because we're just the smartest And he's like imagine if now we're not the smartest if there's something else out there that's just a million times smarter than we are that's not good and i was like oh that's dude, really bad dude that's, that's so not the bad. same thing but just the other night i watched the new mission impossible dead reckoning you guys seen this yeah I saw wasn't it. this what joe biden said that he left the movie saying that he's now going to take ai seriously did you see that is that what it was <laughs> he, it's an actual quote he said i saw the mission impossible movie and now i gotta go have a meeting i kind of agree with him i texted <laughs> jeff d low and I was like, give me any movie. I haven't I want to watch a movie tonight and I don't want to make the decision you're the movie guy. And he was like, watch the new Mission Impossible. Dude, watch that movie and you're like, oh yeah, this is we're fucked. Like if this is what happens, I get that it's a Mission Impossible movie like take that take it with a grain of salt. But it's what you're saying, it's what Elon is saying, it's what made Joe Biden run out of the theater and have a he meeting. Did. It's like <laughs> it basically walked. it's a thing that just he definitely walked. going on. There's no everything he through. stumbled. Is a quick what stumble a, out of the what theater is there. Yeah, no, he sprinted out of there. He's he's mobile. Oh, <laughs> oh, well, well, um, hey, buddy. <laughs> what it boils down to is it's like it's just a machine that runs every computation that you could ever think of a billion times, and it just creates reality of the thing that's going to happen. It's well, wild. yeah. So like, even, uh, Rogan at one point was like, "What if it like starts to analyze the things that it knows that can do better than him? Like, oh, why do we need this like third world country that's making all of these?" parts for apple or whatever or whatever company may be like i can do that let's just ext- let's just let's just eliminate those people right there's going to be people that it feels like it needs around it but like w- if i don't need that like this like the solution to making that better is they're gone that's right, what you're right. saying like if the solution means that they don't exist anymore that's what it will do everything it can to make that happen but i do know that the people that are at the helm of ai that are that are um creating it and that they are securing it they're claiming that like it's still a response of what you make it so like you have to input the type of information for it to learn certain things like it's not it doesn't it's not like an all-knowing being you know what i mean like at some level it still needs to be programmed to a point to learn to an ex- a certain point and i think elon's biggest fear is that that falls in the wrong hands like he brings up that Big one time. guy from like the i forgot it was like washington post or new york times or something where he was like he w- he wants like all humans to be extinct. Yeah, he's an extinctionist. He's, a, he's an extinctionist. Yeah. yeah, he's like a guy in San Francisco, and and Elon's like on That's the biggest podcast metal, in dude. the world, saying that there are there's a big group of people on the West Coast that ha- that are part of this cult that they're like leaders of businesses and stuff, and they like are they're ex- what are they extinctionists? Yeah, they and just he's think like, that see- like humans are a parasite on the earth and shouldn't be there anymore. Well, so he's right, like, they have a pretty simple belief that like, okay, there's eight and a half billion people on earth. Would it be better if those eight and a half billion people are alive on earth or would everything be better if they weren't? And their Correct. belief is that it's better if they just weren't. You know, you're in a, you're arguing from a weird position when Thanos would be like, you got to take it easy. <laughs> right. He only, he's right? only half. Yeah. You got to just relax <laughs> a little bit. What's so dude, ideas? so Elon's like, what if that guy or, or one of his uh, followers like got in charge of AI? It's actually over. So at some point you need to have rules and regulations. It's very interesting. And I hope that we're not around for that. But I know that like our kids and our grandchildren will have to deal with a lot of things. Because I don't think it'll advance to the point where like an AI robot's knocking on my door and like shooting me. My through the twin boys head. are gonna have to deal with that. I don't Tucker know, man. Paxton. It's pretty <laughs> yeah. like, dude. Look how powerful. Like, look at Adolf Hitler, like the worst guy ever. Look how powerful he became and a leader of so many millions and millions of people. Without technology, exactly. Imagine if that person just Crazy. had control of all AI and be like, "This is easy." It's not take fucked. him like six hours of working with one of his engineers coders and it's just over and so that's extinctionist is one of the funniest things i've heard in a very long time it's, it's not you gotta like, read this article pro, he's like, extin- people like, pro right, extinction. Like the earth he's like the earth is just way better without us here <laughs> 
Uh, uh, I mean, Earth is probably like, yeah, let's do that. That sounds sick. Fall golf. We love fall golf. You got to get that, um, you know, this primo prime season golf in while you can. You can still do it. And the Barstool Golf Time app makes it easy for golfers to find the best tee times at the best prices. We love this app because whenever you're you're looking, you know, we're a lot of us public golfers. We talked about playing public golf, mini golf, the whole deal. If you just call one course, check if they got a tee time, you got to wait on the phone or you check their one website. If they don't have a Barstool Golf Time just curates, aggregates all of it into one spot. They got reviews um, from five stars. They've got uh, written reviews where people tell you about the course conditions or how the service was or if it was aerated in the last two or three weeks. Barstool Golf Time is the way to play fall golf. Yeah, the reviews are important. It's people just like you going to these golf courses and then talking about their experience. I mean, the course is going to tell you always, you know, it's the best course in the area. It's awesome. Got to come out here. But the real people who go there and review it, those are that's what's important about the Barcelona Golf Time app because you can see all that. Do I want to go here? What's going on? How good is it actually? It's just it's all encompassing in terms of getting tee times. It's a great app. It's amazing. And then yeah, there's no better time right now than to check that because, you, like you said, Riggs, you don't know how the conditions are. This is like a, a an odd True. time in Northeast. So it's, it's definitely check because all the reviews are up to date. Weather's inconsistent. You really don't know. It's cold, it's hot, this place, that, whatever. And maybe you're in town for business. You don't really know. You're going to find out from the reviews. So uh, you also just need to make one account. You don't have to go make an account on every public golf course in the world. You just want to count Barstool Golf Time. Book with us. All your tee times. You can also earn uh, golf time rewards every single time you book. You can leave course reviews, redeem those rewards for free Barstool Golf merch in our store. Download the Barstool Golf Time app now. I love technology. And oh, by the way, Trent, I had a new plane. So we, we took a new Delta plane the other day, brand new Delta Ooh. plane. I think Trent may have been the first person to go to the bathroom in this thing. Like, yeah, is I did a dump in there. Good, a lot of space. Does that make you more nervous or less nervous? I was going to turn that... to Frank. I didn't want to say before I fly, but I, I, new planes are scarier than old planes for me, for sure. And we're flying in New York to Phoenix. It's, yeah, it's, it's a long, long, long flight. Is that a first class, first class seat? Yeah, there. Oh, yeah. 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 That was first class. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a funny thing where dan's just not he should yeah we've been flying there. first class a lot we travel a lot we do like 70 to 100 flights depending on the person but like minimum we're flying once a week or more if you do the mess 52 weeks like we're, we're already at 75 flights each minimum and uh you know with all of our statuses and all the stuff on delta we're getting bumped up and barstool now is like just booking us first class but for some reason danny rapaport has not been put onto that list there's an excel there sheet somewhere Right. Like someone has a sheet that says this person, this person, this person's all going to have these sorts of status medallion members, whatever. And Danny's not on that list. So. Yeah, it was it was really bad. when We went to the Dominican Republic because there were six of us on a flight and <laughs> four initially were in first class. And then yeah. Brendan Jones was sitting right next to me and Francis Ellis, who was in first class. But he bought back. himself up first class. He to did. Be fair. Yeah. Did he? OK, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. He comes back and he says. Brendan, come with me. You've been upgraded. Danny, you stay put. <laughs> Dude, I mean, there's a very funny story to that, by the way. Francis is hilarious, and he's always thinking the, the comedic way. He goes, he said that he's sitting, there's an empty seat next to him, and the lady goes over and goes, Brendan Jones? And he goes, no, but I'll go back there and get him for you. So he walks back there knowing that you're next to him, and he goes, Brendan, you're coming up to first class right in front of me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, five of the six guys were in first class and your boy was in 30F. I think his reasoning, he said, was because uh, I think he said that Danny's parents' money makes his parents' money look like they're shoe shiners. <laughs> <laughs> so he likes to dig at him any chance he can get. So bringing Brendan up to first class was a nice like victory for Francis. <laughs> Anyways, what was what was that new plane? Like what was what was good about that new plane? Dude, they just had like, you know, every. It's that instant Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi. I streamed the Island game on my phone. So it's like we're actually living in the 21st century here. I'm, I'm in the air, 30,000 feet, and I'm watching without a fucking problem. Pure 4K HD Islander, Islanders game on MSG Plus app. Like that has never happened for me in a million years. Usually you can't even send a fucking text message up there. So that was number one. Number two, the screen was like incredibly. It said like my name up there because it knew that I was sitting there. And then it like you know the um like 
seeing where you are in the world. The maps was insane. Like just the technology on it was nuts. They have these two new like headrests on either side. So like you don't have to lean your head all the way onto the window. Like you can actually like lean your head left. It's like a little bit closer. It sounds ridiculous, but for people that fly a lot, it's a nice little addition. Yeah. And the bathrooms were like double the size. So I, on the way home, I actually, I took a dump in the new plane. I had the new plane again and you can just spread your legs all the way out. You can do whatever you want. You can kick off, you can kick around. You could, you could get fully changed in there and not even know you're on a plane. That's how big the bathrooms are. Yeah. Yeah. I knew you would. Yeah. Cause on the way out there, um i took a dump on the plane and yeah. you and when we landed you were like oh, i ate this cookie uh Double that came with cookie that came with the meal and you're like i've been battling it i didn't want to go in the restroom but i was like dude if i can fit in that bathroom and have room to move i mean i'm huge i got i'm thick all the way through if if but frankie borelli can go in there yeah. and do backflips if he wants to <laughs> yeah so i'm glad that you experienced that because those those new planes are nice really nice I got to go to get checked. I can't eat like a cookie took me down on that plane. I got to get checked. I got to go to the doctor. I think I might have like Crohn's disease or something. I've been doing a lot of WebMD, which is a problem, but I really think that there's something wrong mm-hmm. with me. Like my intestines are fighting me with everything I eat now. And it's like brand new. Like there's no way that Frankie Borelli, who grew up on fucking Italian food his entire life, has all of a sudden in one month not been able to handle cheese like that's i grew up on fucking pizza i grew up on this shit i i I had 19 fucking bowls of cereal like two months ago and now all of a sudden like if i have a little bit of milk i have to shit my to shit my pants that's crazy i think it's pretty i i i hate to tell you but i really do think as you get older your metabolism gets shittier and if you eat shittier it's just wreaks havoc on your body something's wrong like i feel like i'm i've lost weight like i i don't something is wrong like i know it is i'm gonna get i'm gonna prove it to you guys because i know i can't even eat a cookie i understand what you're saying but at some level it's like it's unlivable what's happening and compared to what it was three months ago it's crazy i have to take lactate before i have a fucking banana it's like i don't even know what's happening wrong with you i hate to say it but i hope (laughs) something is wrong (laughs) so do i I at this point (laughs) you're talking to a guy who's getting a cpap machine delivered today so (laughs) it's like is Dude, that, I went and got. Apnea? You should go to. That is sleep apnea. Yeah, I went and got. Um, because I snore. People in my life tell me I snore. When we go to the Dad Bod Classic, Frankie and I share a room, and he's like, it's "Unshareable." Dude, you got to just figure something out. So I got a sleep test. They do an at-home sleep test where you like put a thing on your finger, put a thing on your chest, whatever, and you sleep one night, and they send the data in, and they're like, "Yeah, you have a uh, you have severe sleep apnea." I guess on average, people have five episodes an hour whatever an episode is i don't really know whether you're like snoring or you're moving or whatever <laughs> I'm just <laughs> fucking going crazy in my bedroom I, five is the average right yeah your boy's got 47 an hour so Bro, and that's geez. just like anything over 30 mean? they're like you gotta you gotta figure it out you gotta figure it out now so i got a cpap machine an coming episode? today the guy's still what? in here but we have no idea what an episode constitutes. I think the devil, I think the devil like comes down and just touches Trent on the forehead and he just yeah. goes, nah. going yeah. crazy. No, I, you can <laughs> probably look it up. I'm sure they he just comes I up, have, he just he just, uh, he just hovers over Trent and just blows on his nose like <laughs> and Trent just mm. fucking <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. So I got a, yeah, a new chapter in my life is starting where I'm gonna have to look like Darth Vader when I sleep. So it's just you know do you think if it's you getting old do you think songs. it'll uh, you, have you eliminated like the sugars right before dinner like the like the or right before yeah. sleep like the dan soder joke where he's like why do i feel like i'm a you know 20 <laughs> year old homicide detective 20 year old homicide detective maybe it's i have i've been trying not to not doesn't work every night i don't always accomplish my goal but i try to stop eating i don't eat after 8 p.m and that okay. has actually helped a ton um, my whoop would also agree that it helps a ton mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. yeah i think I don't think anything I do. I mean, I could probably lose 40 pounds, which I'm you not definitely had the snoring issue, which is like scary because that means your brain's not getting any oxygen as you sleep. Like the snoring is bad. I've always told my dad it's, to get that fucking machine. He still just snores throughout the house. It's nuts. Dude, my dad has it and he has changed his life. And it's not just like, oh, you get better sleep when your body is going through those things. It's you're like going through fight or flight and it's fucking with your organs and your brain. And like people die in their sleep from sleep apnea. It's not just a oh he can stop snoring and maybe sleep a little bit better it affects every part of your body that's what i've been learning about this whole thing that's why i'm getting it outside of that i wouldn't care like i'll just snore and i won't sleep as good but if it's gonna fucking kill me i don't want i've that got a buddy that happen. has so, it's no, a little compact machine he brings it on bachelor parties we all laugh at him we take the videos he looks like darth vader sitting in the bed but he <laughs> sleeps like a baby man it's crazy like we we're looking at him like 
Mike, like you've got a fucking machine on to go to sleep. It's like the most simple <laughs> thing in the world. You just sleep. And he's just sitting there, but he is passed out. And he used to not be able to breathe. Like we would be yeah. at a party or we'd all like be traveling somewhere and we'd be sleeping in the same room as him. And it would just be like this. It'd be like, and we're like, oh no, Mike! Like, you want to like, you want right. to, you want to save him. So yeah, right. now yeah. he's just so a I'm, sleeping beauty. I'm actually excited about it. You know, the thing that you gotta people are like guests are gonna have to get used to you looking like Darth Vader. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, mm-hmm. At night, which would be you know, I'm just getting old. I'm getting old. Like I, now I gotta be yes. like, hey, I got. By the way, I gotta. <laughs> you bring, you bring a lady over. Not. You're like, all right, <laughs> let's get going. It's just you. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Uh, what do you want to watch? <laughs> let's, let's, we can watch the office. We can watch that. Be kind of fun, huh? So that's just something I got to get used to. But that's what I'm. 34 years old. So what can you do? Yeah, it is what it is. All right. Man. It is what all it right. Is. Let's. Uh, I think that's all we got. Let's throw no, it. Closest um, to the pin? Oh, oh yeah, we do have, have closest have. to the pin. We can. We can not. I have the questions. We cannot do it if you don't want to. Oh, you have the questions. Let's go. I have the questions. Closest to the pin. Yeah. I like the questions. Oh, I, I worked on the questions. By the way, real quick forgot. before we get to that, we did, almost a, forgot. we did a lot of sleep talk just now, and we've been on some emails about a potential, or oh, I the think pod. they're locking it in. Oh my God, dude, this eight sleep company that's about to hop on board with us. Mm-hmm. I've been an eight sleep super fan. I followed them on Instagram because they, they caught me on Instagram ads. It's like a pod that goes over your mattress. I heard that's coming to our houses in the next couple of weeks. It's a pod that goes over your mattress and regulates the temperature of your bed. So if you Ooh. if you're sweating or if you're getting hot, it cools your actual bed. Like it's not like I don't know what the technology is. I don't know how it's going to happen. I just know that it tells what your body temperature is, and then it fluctuates and it gets hotter, colder. When you wake up, maybe it's warm. Wow, that's something I've been looking forward to. And they're not even on board yet. So hopefully we can get across the finish line with those guys. That is going to be serious stuff. Let's do close to the pin. They just got their free ads. So I don't know if they're coming on board. Anymore. Well, yeah, but I, I would have bought it anyway. Like that's how I've <laughs> yeah. been looking at this thing for a while. All right, closest to the pin this week. We got four questions as always. You guys know the drill. Are we texting Alex Bush or are we just? Do, honor do you want to go yeah. over last week's? Do you want to go just, over last week's? Oh yeah, first? go over last week's. And then I think we should just do honor system. I like honor system. What do you? No, guys think? text mm, Alex Bush. I think you text, text the group I, with the invisible, invisible text. link in the group. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, let's go over last week. Okay. Yeah. So last week's the. First one was Francis's arrival to his hotel in Boston on Thursday. Riggs, 5.04 p.m. Trent, uh, 4.58 p.m. Frankie, 4.47 p.m. Dan, 5.06. I had 5.11 and Francis had 5.35. And he actually sent a video that I can put in the pod right now. Closest to the pin challenge. I am walking into my Boston hotel through the doors at 4.54 p.m. Home sweet home in the Westin. 4.54 p.m. Oh. Which means Trent wins. Yes. Nice work. Wow. Were you right That's on the hot. money? I think Trent was that like he was 4.58, so he was four seconds or four, uh, four minutes. minutes off. Okay. okay. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is finishing position in NASCAR on Sunday. Oh, Riggs 27, one. Trent 22. Frankie 14, Dan first, when Alex race, 17, Francis 31, he finished 23rd, so Trent also won that. I yeah, freaking Trent wow. had, oh, Trent had 22, and he finished 23rd. So the guy who Let's won, go. Ryan Blaney, I don't know if he won the race or he won the season long, you guys were there. No, you Ross Chastain, so Watermelon the race. Race. Yeah. So Ryan Blaney, and I and I got it, and, and we uh, the foreplay socials tweeted like, oh, our guy wins this. And then I got someone tagged me being like, holy shit, D-Rap. Like, did you just call this? No, I got you finished 23rd. <laughs> no. no. No, damn. No. All right, another point for me. No, yeah, no, no. Third total shots in the Blues at Devils on Friday. Riggs 54, Trent 57, Frankie 60, Dan 63, me 54, Francis 58. They finished with sixty nine. So oh, wow, that was Dan because he had the he had sixty three. That was the highest. Oh boy, Dan, let's go big nice. hockey. And guy. then the last one was the uh, lowest recorded temp in the D- Dominican Republic so far. We <laughs> oh, I I like divulged into all those uh, charts and I figured it out. Okay. Uh, so oh, Riggs had fifty one. So did I. Trent had sixty. Dan, uh, Frankie sixty three. Dan fifty nine. Francis sixty three, and it was fifty nine. Let's go on the so number. So Dan That's had two. that Thank on you. the number. 
That's two points. Wow, two points. That's big. All right, so with all that said, what are the standings right now for closest to the pit? Fucking Bush is like a political candidate who goes in as an independent, and he's just taking all these votes from me. Last week, we had the same guest twice. Same exact vote. Yeah, it's tough. I'm not going to lie. I had the same guess. I don't know. I'm just coming. Yeah, you know, honor, system. Um, honor system. Overall points. First first place, Trent and Dan tied at eight. Wow. Second, Riggs. Frankie won. And I have zero. <laughs> How many do I have? You have four. Eight. eight. We're separating. Four, Trent. We're separating. Yeah, man. We got to figure it All out. Right, All right. Let's do this week. All right. The first one. We mentioned just an absolute rocket ship of a video that our friends Frankie Trent and Brendan Jones produced. As of right now, it has 965,000 views on Instagram. This is just on Instagram. How many views will it have when we record, what is it, next, this time next week? And this is wow. a bit of a question, a bit of a question about, you know, algorithm and, and analytics. You know, we found on YouTube that's pretty consistent, you know, the first day and there's, is, is the most and there's a drop off. I'm not really sure with Instagram because it's it's a very timeless video, so it could have a really long tail. So All that's right. that's the we're going to get very How specific many... with the number. By the way, it has to be like the whole thing. Well, okay. it, you can only see on Instagram like no, but like I have the, the analytics on mine. Oh, you can okay. see it. Okay, you can see it. Okay. All right. Um, what is it at right now? It's at right nine. Now, 60... All it I is can at... see is nine sixty five on Instagram. I'll tell you right now. It's got. 30,000 likes. It's at 972,829. Yeah, How see, many numbers after the decimal do we need beginning. to send? How many decimals? Everything, I every number. I, I think you send the whole thing. The whole number. Okay, okay I see, I see, I see. How the fuck do I make this invisible again? You hold, hold the arrow and send. I got it, I got it. Wait, how do you do that? Oh, okay, okay, okay. How we send oh, so you can't yeah, do it on the computer. Bush, that's that not what we talked about, Alex. That's not invisible. Can you not send it on the computer? I fucked up. Oh, you wow. might be able to. You just got to hold like the send like really long. But I don't think there's a send on the computer. For there's like an arrow sure. like send, right? No, I don't see one. I don't think you can do it on the uh, on a Mac, Alex. You didn't. You I didn't I fucked it. up. I just I just didn't. Oh, I didn't screwed hold up it there well too because I just touched it. Oh no, it's still invisible. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, the fact if the, the odds of us all having the same number at this point we're That'd in be millions. Insane. Right? That's what I would have thought. But by the way, that video on TikTok I think is at like seven hundred thousand. That at some That's point, gonna could go way like, higher than Instagram. That could be at like forty-five million at some point. Yeah, that it, TikTok it lives forever, and it'll just go every once in a while. Yeah. All right. So how do all we right. un? We just touch it. All right. I think we're good. All right. I think all the guests all right, are going to read them. It's just a yep. bunch of numbers I'll in go the first. one million range. Yep. My number is one million six hundred seventy-eight thousand nine hundred and six views for that video by this time next week. Wow. Do you think it's going to gain? Close to seven hundred thousand wow. views over the next seven Fingers days. Crossed. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying I, I'd be, I'd be interested. I said one, one million two hundred thirteen thousand two hundred ninety four. I just, I have a little faith in Instagram after the first. Be sharing the fuck out of this video. Forty eight hours. Uh, I'll go next. I got one million four five three six six six. Just felt like first week it's going to do a hundred percent. You know, second week is about 50 percent of what the first week is that's just a, a rough guess yeah i go one i got i did the high 1.3 million so one three eight seven zero zero eight i think it'll get like 300 000. i mean if you got three hundred thousand more views that because how many more people are going to get it thrown in front of them is the question youtube is definitely like hey this next video but instagram might be the same yeah all right second question well when tiger shares it who knows what's gonna happen oh we or got Scotty. It. I got to fucking tweet it. He's, or Scotty. Yeah, how did, dude, I didn't get one response or comment from a golfer. How about that? Yeah, I don't know. That is interesting. You know, not like no one. Yeah. Um, number two, Michigan plays at Penn State this weekend. It's a big game. Dave Portnoy is obsessed with Connor Stallions. How many total tweets between now and when we record next week will Dave send about the Michigan scandal? Which which recording next week? This one. I think one full week. Okay. Okay. Does he have to say the word Connor Stallions in it? He does have to say Connor Stallions, so it's a bit of a judgment call. We're gonna we're gonna go on Alex Bush here, but it's gotta be like about this it's gotta reference the scandal in some way. I think he, I mean it's been heating up for like a month. It could be Yeah, it could be a big number. Or you know, who knows? Okay, my number is in. Wanna lead us off, Trent? Um, is everybody in? It looks like everybody just sent. I had the number at thirteen tweets. I have That's thirteen as well. 
Wow. I went for 33. I think I think he's just going to I think there's going to be more I think there's going to be more developments early next week. I think he's just going to keep on tweeting about it. I think 33. Wait, here's the question. If he's just live tweeting the game, those don't count, no. right? Cuz I'm sure he'll like, be doing that. But if he's like, "Oh, try st- sign stealing that, bitch." That's that counts. That counts. Yes. Okay. That's going to be judgment all right. call. It's a judgment call. Okay. Could be higher. I went with 11 tweets. Alex I went Bush? nine, so it looks like I got anything under, which is good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the outlier here. Okay. <laughs> Riggs, Riggs is going to kill Thirty-three is crazy. Bush. All right. Number three. 33 uh, we're, big YouTube, we're big YouTube golf guys now. By the big way, YouTubers. real quick, do we make like a graphic for this as we do them live on YouTube or no? Yeah, there's a, there's a graphic that go. There's a little bar under it. Nice. And then like we have that. the social graphic. Cool. Okay. Subscribe to the podcast channel, by the way, on YouTube. It's doing yeah, well, really? by the way. It only has like eight thousand subscribers, but it does like over ten thousand views. So that it's getting the same that it was getting on the full channel. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We had four hundred thousand was... subscribers or whatever it is on the other channel, and it was getting ten to fifteen thousand. And now it's just getting that again. So thank you to everyone that's actually watching the podcast. Make sure you go subscribe to that channel because we want more people there to see it and be able to watch this thing instead of just listen to it. All right, so we are big YouTube golf guys now, big YouTubers. Uh, one of the fellow YouTube golf community members is playing in a PGA Tour event this weekend. George Bryant, Wesley mm-hmm. Bryant's brother, Brian Bros okay. Golf. He's playing in the Butterfield Bermuda Championship this weekend, this week. What will his first round score be? A little bit of context. The winning score last year was 19 under, which is you know kind of standard. It can get very windy in Bermuda. I believe this is his first ever appearance in a PGA Tour event. Who told us he's really good? Grant probably. I think Grant Horvat did. It was Grant. Yeah, he was like. This Do we know guy what the score to un- par is? Do we know what the? Uh, I'm sorry. What the? What the? Uh, that's a good question. I'll find out right now. What par is? Yeah. yeah. Par it's is. Par. I couldn't come up. Par with is it. 71. Okay, that's that's important actually. Oh yeah. Okay, I've got mine in. Looks like looks like everybody's in, right? All right, I'll go first. I um said 67. A four under 67. Hell yeah, Trent. Wow, I'm just, I be believe a great debut. I believe Grant believer. Horvath. He fixed my driver. Go watch that video. He fixed it in 30 seconds. This guy knows good golf, and he plays good golf. And he, if he said George Bryan is good, the way Grant's been playing, this guy's shooting a 67. I said 69. I said 69. I think he's going to do well, but I don't think it, I think that's like as as well as he's going to do right there. I don't, is Bermuda the one where the wind gets like insane? Yes, it can. Get, it's in the mm. middle of the ocean. Bermuda, if you look at a map, so, played there. Is crazy. Same course, like course, like course. seventy it could was like lead the day one, right? If 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 the wind is that insane, like it's a it's a high scoring tournament. Sometimes it very much depends on yeah. If the wind is howling, it's really really hard. That's where when I played that time, that our boy, uh, the guy that finished low amateur at the uh, Parsi Alley, shot eighty one because the wind. Yeah, was so yeah, hard. I remember that. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, sixty nine. I went. Uh, two over seventy three. I just think that's the what debut I said as well. That's what I said. PJ Tour tournament golf. I'm sure Alex Bush said fucking seventy four or something. No, I had I said sixty nine as well. I had oh, to. you bitch. Ooh, <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Last one. I'm gonna make you guys sort of pay attention to soccer a little bit. Ooh. There are this is ten Premier League games this weekend. All twenty teams are playing. How many total cards will be given? So yellow card or a red card. Do you have any context? I was trying to, the, I would say the average is probably somewhere around three per game. And there's 10 games? There's 10 games. Okay. That's what we needed. Quick Google says the average number of cards stood at 3.69 per game, a slight decrease from the 3.79 cards shown on average during the 2021-2022 campaign. Oh, right, the, the, the context in. is uh, there's the referees are like under a crazy amount of pressure there's been like a basically all of the coaches are saying because they have VAR, which is like a video review system, and all the coaches hate it. And the refs have been screwing up, and like there's a mutiny against referees. So, how do they respond to that? Do they go ham or do they kind of go hands off? Mm. We're right, sure man, that's man, the man. number of games because last time we were off. Yes. Yes. 10 games. Every Premier League team is playing either Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Okay. I felt like a uh, criticism, but no, I just, you know, just <laughs> stating the facts. Week eight, no bye weeks in yeah, the NFL. Very strange it's news to me. Unacceptable. That was <laughs> that was surprising. <laughs> but nobody knew, so it, it's all relative. Very true. Very true. All right, I'll go first here. Um, I said thirty-two cards. 
That's all I guess. I said uh, twenty seven. I, I think the refs. Because I don't know anything about this. I think the refs are gonna are gonna be a little hands off this week because they're scared. They're not happy with what they. I think they don't want to be part of the story. I say twenty seven. I said twenty. Okay, I went high. Then I'm gonna. I'm sh- fucking Bushman. I went thirty three. I said thirty three uh, cars. Oh, mm-hmm. you're safe. I said twenty three. Oh, so I need. You think they're going real hands off? High. Anything yeah, yeah. close to the normal amount is great for me. You need one of those chaotic games where there's like, you know, six cards and everyone's out. Like you need, you need. Buddy, I'm out. rooting for violence out there. I hope somebody gets stabbed on the fucking pitch out there. You know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay. Right. So we're all That's in. Four. Those are four. Cool. That's closest to the pin. Another edition. And uh, yeah, hopefully I get a fucking point. I don't remember which one I got a point on. I feel like I'm scoreless. Uh. All right. All right. That's it. Uh, we're in. We're gonna. I think we're done. Everybody have anything? Any pressing? concerns to discuss before we throw it to uh eric no um, my stuff's still not here they're now quoting 23 days which is not six to 22 days which is a problem so yeah they keep kind of changing that on you eh? it's crazy my, oh, are you my, in the office my, by any chance all of my yeah. passions are just somewhere is kyle tim's in the office no he's uh he's at home today he'll be in tomorrow though i wanted to ask him about my uh blackstone grill Oh, I hadn't used. Oh, I thought you were talking a... about the Francis situation. No, no, yeah, oh I no! Wondering. I no, saw I he didn't. called in. How did radio go yesterday? I saw clips. Well, we landed at like seven thirty in the morning, and I was sleeping from like nine, or we got home at like six, and I walked to my house around seven thirty, and uh, and I was like, and I was sleeping and like in and out of sleep, and I woke up around noon, and I had like a bunch of text messages being like, "Hey, do you want to call into radio today?" I'm like, "What the fuck." Like I didn't know who was on it. I was just like, all right, now I'm up. And Francis was on there, like with his scathing, like uh, KFC set it up being like Francis was going nuts in the office today. I'm like, all right, this is like about what? About a fucking putt in Barstool Golfs. So yeah, I had to like defend the fucking the brand of Barstool Golf. When Francis reads the text messages that I had sent him and that like the way it all went down. It was one of those situations where, like, he thought he had us, and then as he's reading the text, he's like, it made me sound like completely normal. Where I was like, right. "Hey, like, I don't want to go again." I was like, "He's like, he's afraid of Kirk Minahan. That's why this is all happening." And then he read the text message, and I w- said word for word, "I don't want to wage war on Kirk Minahan for something that he didn't do wrong." Like, it it seemed like I'm just going after him to go after him. I know I gave him that putt. So if you want to write the blog, go ahead and write the blog. But I know. That when I was looking Kirk in the eyes on the golf course, I said, that's good. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of yeah. the day, like I don't want to go after the guy when I know I didn't do, he didn't do anything wrong. You can say he right. did something wrong because you watched the video, but I know behind the scenes he did not. So that was kind of fucked. And then like, I don't know, the whole talk, if anyone doesn't know what the fuck we're talking about, there was like a controversy on Barstool Golfs. Kirk Minahan scooped up a ball. Francis called him out on it. He wrote a blog about it. Getting views for it for sure, and we talked. We about talked it. about it on the last. Oh, episode, we did. Didn't we? we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, People know we, they did. Okay. So anyway, on on radio, I had to just defend it. So it is what it is. I think I think he um I think he realized it now. And the funniest part is like they're like oh and like KFC and all of them were like we're just trying to get views for the videos and like we're trying to get this thing. It's like it didn't even do like nothing. It, it's just a bar, it's a Barcel Goss video. It's like got one hundred fifteen thousand views. It's not even that. It's not like it's fucking the biggest video of all time. That's the part. It's good that's for been, the match, though. It's, it's great all good for the, for the match. match. It's great for the match. Yeah. But I was trying to explain to them. I'm like, I don't think this is going to do anything. It's not going to explode this thing into another realm. It's no uh, Tiger Woods lip syncing video. I'll tell you that. It's not going to enter some fucking dimension. But it's definitely good for the match. I think we're going to do it in Myrtle Beach. I saw some texts today. Francis is really, really eager to do it. We've seen his game in Bermuda. So I think he's like, I want to do this match now. Uh, Bermuda. Uh, DR. <laughs> We, is that where they're playing that? Is that where the Wesley Brown? Yeah. Okay. You got it wrong in the last one, too. What were we talking about? You said the Bahamas. You're just like, any of the last B <laughs> word that you heard is, is the place that <laughs> are we going to the Bahamas? Golf. We are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, going, we're going too many places, man. I know. It's I know. too much. It's way too well, much. We are going to do that match, it sounds like. Just got to see what Kirk's available. I just need is Kirk to like get his game up because he probably hasn't played since the last one. But I feel like he's the kind of gamer that he'll just be able to step up and play. But I think so, too. He's usually like yeah. just ready to go. He's, he's going to have the same game. He plays right. very consistent. He plays old man golf very well. It is consistent. And Francis could be all over the place, so he probably needs more like momentum going into it. It should be good. Uh, Myrtle Beach. I think that's where we're gonna do it. So that'll be cool. fun. Cool. All right. I think that's it. All right. Yeah, we're gonna it. throw it to uh, Eric Van Royen, most recent winner on the tour. Fantastic interview with him. We'll be back next week. Hit it hard. Hit hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. 
Get into the game with the Bleacher Report Sports Add-on on Max. You can stream select live games from the NBA, NHL, U.S. men's and women's soccer, and NCAA men's March Madness. It's a front row seat to every thrilling moment, every amazing play, and every unbelievable highlight. Max is the one to watch for the best in entertainment, streaming 24-7 live news, and now live sports. We love live sports, boys. It's amazing. You go on Max and you just see all the games. Pittsburgh Penguins game was on. Islanders game is on. It's 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 got everything now, and um, it's it it's an all encompassing app. They've got that, and then which which is not even in the read, but I've been seeing it. I've been signed up for all the notifications. They're getting that Harry Potter series going on Max, mm. and that's are they? That will be a mm. oh yeah, that will be appointment television, just like Game of Thrones, just like um uh the Dragon Show. Why am I not thinking of the name of that? House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon. H-O-B? Yeah, House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones, and then that Harry Hot Potter D. series, man, it is going to be electric. I don't Dude, know. I was just watching Harry Potter movies last night. I just threw them on as sort so of like good. background. They're so good, so good. They're gonna dive. They're on Max. So they're just all on it's Max. It's gonna be a multi series. Every uh, it's gonna be diving into each book. So it's like it's really you're gonna get multiple episodes, multiple seasons on each book. Wow, I don't know how much they want me talking about it, but you know, I don't know much about it aside from the things I'm reading on Reddit and all of the Google News. Um, list but i'm very excited about that the point is is that max is like hbo and max is is at the helm of fucking entertainment man that's what that's what it is when you hear that and intro you know something's about to happen you know it it's synonymous with tiger woods winning the masters tiger woods wins the masters 2019 we were on hbo that night man uh, BR sports add on included for a limited time with any max subscription after the promotional period add BR bleacher report sports starting at nine 99 a month base subscription required sign up now at max.com slash sports that's max.com slash sports. Yo, what's happening? What's going what's on, up, man? man? How, how we doing boys? We're doing okay. great. How you doing? I'm good. Wait, is this okay where I'm sitting? Is it too bright? It's in the back. All good. No, I think it looks good. I like that. It looks like a comfortable chair. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, it is comfy. I mean, I'm in my room. We've got, I've got two small kids and it's a bit chaos downstairs. So I think this will be the best. <laughs> Amazing. Well, yeah, we'll just hop right in. You have a place in Minnesota still? I know you're in Florida full time, but do you still have a place? No, we don't have a place. So we're not, well, not yet. I'd love to get a place. So we, um, we come to Rose's uh, parents. So I'm with the in-laws right now. Wow. All right. Very nice. Well, yeah, we, uh, we appreciate the time as always. I, um, there's a lot to, there's a lot to break down, a lot to discuss. We got, um, Eric Van Royen, most recent winner on the PGA tour. You shot an eight under, uh, 28 on the back nine to win the golf tournament. What, I mean, what was that? Did you, where'd that come from? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's certainly not something you plan, uh, whenever you plan things in golf. It uh, it usually doesn't go that way anyway. So um, yeah, what an absolute wild ride! Um, you know, shooting twenty eight, finishing birdie, birdie eagle, uh, unbelievable, man! It's it's truly stuff that you dream about as a kid. Yeah, I'm just wild. It's been a pretty crazy last forty eight hours with emotions and highs and lows, and um, so I'm, I'm pretty drained, but. Yeah, thinking back on Sunday, just it's just blow to be honest. Yeah, I wanted to get a little bit into you know the the work that you've done on your game recently before we talk about you know kind of the your your buddy and and why you went back to Minnesota and why yeah. it was so emotional. But I, I, you missed a bunch of cuts in a row at the beginning of the year, which Riggs and I were talking about. It's very hard to imagine someone with your golf swing missing that many cuts in a row. And it's just it's so aesthetically pleasing. You know, you, you're kind of in like Louis Oosthuizen and Adam Scott tier. Um, what was the issue and, and how did you find your way to Sean Foley? Because that's a name that obviously golf fans will be very, very familiar with from his time with Tiger Woods, Justin Rose, Hunter Mahan. Um, he's still a, a mainstay on the PGA tour, um, but not, not coaching as many, you know, top 10, top 20 players as he used to. So what was your decision like to go to Sean? Um, first question. Yeah. Um, golf's a, a tough game, you know, and it doesn't have to go far off for things to start going wrong. And, Likewise, it, when you when you're not far off, um, even though it feels that way, it doesn't always take much to get back onto the straight and narrow. You know, who are you good and making putts? And, but when you're in that moment, it, 
always feels like you're far away. So um, the swing was off. I'm coming back from from injury. I took three months off since the, the Open Championship last year. You know, pulled out of that on the Wednesday. And I went home to South Africa for three months to rehab, recover, and came back. And my golf sucked. And golf sucks. And all of a sudden, there's pressure on. Um, never mind trying to win, but keeping your card. And it kind of snowballs from there. And um, got to a point. It was after Colonial where um, my my old coach, Doug Wood from South Africa, you know, we're still extremely close, but he just couldn't come to the U.S. as often as I would have liked. You know, I'm struggling and I need a guy um, in my corner helping me out and he just really wasn't able to to put in the time for, for personal reasons and it got to the point where I had to pull the plug. And um, the reason I went to Sean Foley you know, Sean, like you say, he's been on tour for a long time and he's been in and around tournaments and we'd have dinner together and, and I, you know, I pick his brain, we'd shoot the breeze and I just enjoyed his energy and enjoy the things he talked about. And so he was the first one I thought of. I was like, look, he's worked with some of the best in the world. He knows what that picture looks like, being number one in the world, winning major championships, winning FedEx Cups. Um, if that's something I want to do, um, he's the kind of guy that I want to be out, you know, around, but do I want to work with him as a swing instructor? I have no idea. So I called a few coaches and had a few, um, just sort of phone calls with them. And then I had a few meetings set up to go talk to him and I went to Foley first. So it was the week of the US Open, went to see Foley up in Orlando and it, it just clicked. It just clicked. Um, it was an hour and I was flushing it. And um, since then, I played really good golf. So that's kind of been the story of the last three months. That's incredible. It's like, I, it's like an interview process. I mean, you were kind of interview, you know, you were going yeah. to go through a whole process of interviewing coaches. What do you, in this call, you know, if you talk to a coach for an hour, what do you, are you just trying to figure out if you guys vibe? Are you trying to figure out his technical mindset? Yeah. What, what is it? A bit of both. I've only I've only really had one coach, and that was Doug from South Africa, Doug Wood, and um, so I'm trying to figure out exactly: Do we vibe? Are we going to get along? You know, this is serious. This is my career, my dream. If we don't get along, I don't I don't really want to pick you up. Uh, I don't really want to call you after a bad day and talk about how bad I hit it. If we don't gel, so do we gel? And then, like, I don't know what's your coaching philosophy? Is there like, are you pretty boxy? Like, do you teach everybody the same stuff? Or are you able to coach a Jim Furyk and an Adam Scott? You know? Um, so if for me, if it's guys that tell you this is the way you need to do it, I'd turn around and run away because there's no one way to do this, right? So try, try and figure that stuff out. And I already knew that I clicked with Foles so that box was ticked. And then when I went to see him in Orlando, it was like, okay, I don't need to go see anybody else. This is, this is the route I want to take. Was it anything drastic? And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that the answer was probably no, just because I, you know, I've seen a couple different guys, especially guys that work with, you know, I, I, I worked a couple weeks ago with this guy, Andy Patton out here in Scottsdale area. He works with a bunch of Corn Ferry Tour guys. And we, and he's a really good dude. We kind of vibe. So, you know, in my process of going through finding my coach, you know, <laughs> the we Riggs interview process. He, I love uh, it. He, I love he it. like, you know, he was telling me, he's like, I get these guys. And Chan Kim, I believe, is one of his guys who won back to back times on the Corn Ferry Tour yeah. this year after missing a bunch of cuts and playing what he thought was horrific golf. And he's like, he comes to me and he's like, his swing, what he doesn't realize, looks pretty much identical to how it did a year ago when I saw him even though he just missed two or three cuts in a row. And he's like, so a lot of what I do is you got to think from a coach's standpoint, how can I relay the smallest important piece of information to these guys in a way that just makes them feel confident and comfortable because they don't realize that their swing is pretty much the same. You're spot on. It was never far off. But when, you, when you're in that hole, when you're spiraling, What's so funny about this game, when you're playing well, you never feel like you're going to play bad again, right? Like, 
I if I play RSM next week, it's like I'm rocking up. It's like I'm I, I feel pretty good. Yeah. And um, likewise, when you're playing poor, like you sometimes feel like holy shit, I don't know how to turn this around. So, you know, usually the case with with guys on the PGA Tour, it's not far off. So it's a balance between, for me, for me it was, um, I have a pretty weak grip and I like to hit draws. Now, those the two those don't usually I was going to say, I'm thinking about that so, in my hands and it's it's not it's not really, it's not really making sense. <laughs> yeah, you go, whoa, whoa. Yeah, so, so I need to focus on keeping a nice, strong club face all the way through, right? So my club face was getting weak and then if we want to go into technical stuff, like my club face was getting weak and then to save it, I was getting narrow on the way down and stuck and I'd flip it, okay? And it would go either 30 yards left or 30 yards right. So I was playing Canadian Open. This was the week right before I started working with Foley and bro, the rough was like ankle deep, right? And I hit like five fairways in two days. I made one birdie, missed the cut by a mile and it's just like you can't play golf this way, man. And I know or I sort of think I know my golf swing. And at that point, I was doing it by myself for like three weeks. But I'm not a coach, okay? It's like going into the gym with your trainer. He can help you, adjust you, um, you know, make help you have good form. And then going in by yourself, it's like, yeah, I'm squatting, but my back is screwed. Um, so all I needed was falls and an eye. And someone to be like, look, dude, these are the two, three things we're going to focus on. And that's it. It's really been that simple. That's amazing. Yeah. I, uh, so I, I saw, uh, those guys, um, Foles and, and Woods were posting that you were using the pro sender, which a couple months ago basically did an infomercial on the pro sender on this show. Cause I had those two guys on <laughs> and it was right around the time Rory was posting videos with it. Uh, Phil was using it. You obviously use it, you know, I, not to go full in on that, but it's a good example because it's kind of hot in the streets right now. You know, how, how can a training aid like that, really any training aid, but I guess this one in, in this instance, really help? Because if it's helping players at the top of the game, somebody like you who just won on the PGA Tour for the second time, you know, how, how, how important are, are training aids? What, what does something like that do for you in your feels? I think you said it perfectly, your feels. Um, you know, we talk about swing thoughts, you know, when, when you play. For me, it's really a feel. Um, and I think a feel is so much stronger than I thought. Because if I feel fade, okay, I feel it kind of in my hands, and I'm almost feeling like I'm going to put some English on the ball, right, and it's moving left to right. It's not a thought. I don't think wrist positions, impact position, head a little tilted, you know what I mean? It's a feel, and then I and then I see it and I hit it, and so with the pro sender um, or any training aid for that matter, I'm trying to pull a feel from it, and if I can't do that, then it's no good for me. Um, so yeah, there's there's a gazillion training aids that you're gonna find, and and next month's golf dodges there'll be different training aids, and I'll promise you they'll fix your swing. Um, but the pro sender, it seems like has, has helped a ton of guys. Um, again, for me, it's, it's pretty simple. It's keeping a strong face and making sure I get it into that little pocket that it has. Right. And then I sort of maintain that all the way through and rotate through. So it's pretty simple. So I put it on, I get a feel from it. I take it off and I try and copy the feel and it's been great. Yeah. I appreciate you using golf digest as your example there. Um, my, my good former friends. So thank you very <laughs> much. So no, 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 that's, <laughs> no, I, that's I, his, we prefer uh, golf digest. So that's, you know, we love that's them. His heritage. That's his heritage. For nearly two decades, spider putters from TaylorMade have been claiming major championships, clinching the biggest team competitions and stacking victories across professional tours. Globally, now TaylorMade has revitalized the essence of this iconic franchise with the all-new Spider Tour series. Spider Tour is back with the OG Spider shape, plus Roy McIlroy's iconic Spider Tour X in two new shapes and Spider Tour V and Z. Look, this is my new gamer. We just kind of were sent um, generic ones of these when we were at, I think it was Sand Valley, and I say generic and that it wasn't necessarily like they weren't specifically fit to us. 
Taylor made was like, hey, we got this new line of putters that are coming out in the next month or two. We want to just send a handful to you guys. Try them if you like them. Cool. We'll take some feedback, whatever. This new Spider Tour X that I have in the bag, I'm obsessed with. I don't want to give anything away, but we played a little bit of a match in the last week or so, and it's just rolling that thing in beautifully. Nice speed. It has a great feel and look to it. It's clean. I love these new bad boys from TaylorMade. Everything they touch turns into gold at this point. I mean, they, they're releasing clubs like it's nothing, and every single club is better than the last one. I don't know. It's we're in the we're in like a renaissance of golf clubs that Taylor made right now. It seems like they like someone came down from space and told them, "Here's a new technology, and you're just going to run with it." Every single thing that Mike Essie has sent me and that we've gotten from Taylor made, I've been blown away by. I mean, it started honestly. It started with that burner, and I mean. The Stealth yeah. and the Stealth 2 and the even the Sim 2 when we first started with these guys. But when that burner came, I'm like, uh-oh, they're like really changing the game. Then I got the TP Reserve sent. And I'm like, wow, things are happening. Now the Spider's back. Really, really cool shit that they're coming up with. And Taylor made is just leading the game. Everyone you talk to, they're just leading the game. And it's just incredible. And what they want you to do is let stability be your best friend on the greens with unmatched consistency. That's what they call it. And forgiveness with the aid of true path alignment, making it easier to aim the putter towards your target. If you have not seen them. They've been all over their Instagram. They look very sexy and clean. They do. And you can shop them now at TaylorMadeGolf.com. So go check them out at TaylorMadeGolf.com. I wanted to ask you, 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 you touched on this at the beginning about the range of emotions and you know, I've had this to a, a much lesser extent where something good happens in your career and you're so like happy and you feel like you know you exist, especially golf is like this kind of insular world and something good happens. And I'm like, oh, we got a video that's pumping right now. And then you come home and your wife's like, you know, there's a problem with the house and it, and it just it takes you completely out of your little world. Um, you've had this at the most extreme level. You win a golf tournament yeah, uh, yeah. after struggling for a long time. It, it's a huge moment in your career. And right after your focus goes to to your buddy who's who's really, really sick. And yeah. you fly to Minnesota and you see him. What is What have those last 48 hours been like? It's been hard, dude. I won't lie to you. It's been very hard. Um, and it's still fresh because we went to see him yesterday at Mayo Clinic. Um, you know, when I sit on Sunday, he doesn't have much time left, like. I don't have a number on it, but it's less than two weeks. Jeez. Uh, we, so yeah, yesterday we said our goodbyes, um, and it's been it's been tough because we've literally been living in um, you know, the most extreme side of the emotional spectrum. Like you say, coming like shooting twenty eight to win the golf tournament, finishing birdie birdie eagle, the best I played, and um turning my career around massive moment and meanwhile a guy who's like a brother to me is about to to you know um leave us and so it's been it's been very difficult dude um but yeah it's just puts things in perspective doesn't it it does it's it's insanely special with how you know how, how little time you know your best friend has how much you know, I, I can imagine he's going through emotionally and how much you delivering yeah. in that moment with, you know, you're not going to get those chances to deliver in that moment. It gives me the chills. It makes me emotional. I don't know either one of you guys to do that. You know, I, I, I can't, again, I can't imagine how hard it is right now. And the fact that you said your goodbyes yesterday, but I got to think it's insanely special for you, for his family, for all of your friends that, you'll kind of have that forever that, Hey, in those last few yeah. weeks, few months that at least we kind of delivered that moment, you know, a hundred percent. Um, you know, he's, he's obviously on some strong pain medication. Um, the cancer is slowly just taking over. And so he, he'd kind of, we went to see him yesterday and he kind of dozes off through conversations every now and then. And, but, um, one of our other old teammates, he was with him on Sunday and they were watching it on his phone because for some reason the hospital doesn't have golf channel which we need to change <laughs> and <laughs> gotta have um, a golf channel yeah so they were watching it on youtube tv on someone's phone and apparently he was just zoned in for like that last hour of play 
and just knowing that we brought a, a smile on his face, you know, means means everything. That's yeah, really we have special. a we have a, a term, and, I, and I've brought this up on the show before. We have a term in in the Jewish tradition called kismet, which is like a supernatural force mm-hmm. where it's just meant to be. And I think I yeah. think kismet came yeah. to mind. Um, I want to ask you about your caddy. Also, uh, you know, you've got kind of a unique situation. Yeah. Feely Goggert, uh, Alex Fe- Alex Goggert, who you also you all played together uh, at Minnesota. He actually qualified for the 3M Open at Minnesota this year. Yeah. Tell me, you, I mean, it seems like yeah. you Minnesota golf, Minnesota Golden Gophers kind of all stick together. You know, John, you, Alex, all all really tight. Yeah, it's unique because I thought that was normal, right? And then I talked to guys on tour, um, and obviously, you know, there's not a ton of Minnesota Gophers on tour, Mm-mm. you know, so. You know, you got your Alabamas, your Georgias, your Wake Forest, your whatever, all all these guys. And not all of them are that close, yeah. man. And, like, I was blown away. Like, we're all still close. One of our mates is a fireman in Columbus, Ohio. So every year at the memorial, we go and hang out with him. And we go on a couple of rides with him on the truck. Like, we try and get together to go see a football game, you know, whether it's Ohio State, Minnesota, yeah. or... Whatever the case might be, so yeah, we're we're so tight knit, man. And there were about five or six of us um, there together yesterday. So yeah, we're all we're all really close. You have There's, the uh, last. I got two real quick. Weeks. I Go got to show you this. This is this is me and Frankie, 2019, and we were at the Minnesota uh, Golden Gophers. Look at that, bro! Golf facility. That is so cool. It was man. like. That brilliant. It was like early April, I want to say, and it was still cold as hell out there, and they were hitting out of those back yeah, bays. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and yeah, it was uh, it was sorry to cut you off, Dan, but it was cool to be up there because you know for college golf and and you know the top tier kind of college golfers and the feeder systems, you think of Georgia and you think Oklahoma State and you think of Correct. Te- you know these schools, and here you guys are up in you know, big 10 country grinding through the winters uh, while everybody's down in these beautiful places playing golf. It's, you know, how'd you end up, how'd you end up deciding I'm going to go to Minnesota of all places? Um, I get asked that a lot, obviously. (laughs) Um, I'm coming from South Africa. We don't have a ton of snow. It's probably, it's more, it's like Southern California. Okay. Um, so there's some places where you can be cold and maybe a bit of snow, but you play golf all year round. And so I don't know much about Minnesota. The coach was from Australia, Brad James. Um, and I got I went on a visit to them, uh, to Kennesaw and uh, Liberty, right? Kennesaw State and Liberty. And you'd think I'd pick one of those two schools, right? A little bit warmer weather. But Minnesota, I, I was I clicked with the coach. Um First, I came here end of May, so it was spring, so it was nice. <laughs> no snow on the ground. Yep. Um, and they were top 25 in the country at the time, so I'm like, okay, damn, I'm coming in. I won't be the best player, so I'll have to work my way into it, and um, we're going to play a strong schedule. That's that's what I want. I want to compete against the best. Um, if I can't beat college kids, how am I going to beat PJ Tour players? So... Um, yeah, that's how I ended up here, man. Um, and you know what? Um, no, it wasn't Oklahoma State. It wasn't all these southern schools. But I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I had else. the same experience when I went to go visit Northwestern. It was like sixty-eight degrees and sunny, and I was sold basically a false, yeah. a false lie because it was cold the entire time <laughs> I was there. <laughs> yeah, that ain't um, be like that. yeah, right. You know, I wanted to ask you: Did you know that you have the last two wins on the PGA Tour by a South African player? I did not know that. Yeah. So it's an interesting time for South African golf. Obviously, a, a hugely pr- uh, proud history golfing nation. Gary Player, Ernie Els, yeah. Retief Goosen. It's in a bit of a weird state now. A lot of the guys, sort of the, the half generation above you, left uh, to go to live. Schwartzel, Ustazen. Uh, you're, you're sticking around carrying the mantle for, for South African golf. What, is, what has that been like? Yeah. I, honestly, I, I did not even think about that. Um, yeah. It's, it's a, People like Ernie, like it's a tough act to follow, man. Yeah. We, uh, I'm, a, I'm a member of a place called Turtle Creek down in Jupiter. And they had a, uh, and this evening where all the pros they invited us out and then the members asked us some questions. So Ernie was there. I was there. Brandon Grace was there as well. Um, Ricky was there. Jessica Corda, like, anyway, 12, 12 of us, 15 of us were there. And, um, 
they're listing off all our accomplishments, right? And Ernie is sitting to the left of me, so they read his stuff for mine. And his list just goes on. Yeah, on, yeah. On. I mean, the guy was in the top 10 in the world for like 14 years. And I'm just like, four professional wins for Eric Ben Roy, and I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, I grew up watching him and Goose and winning majors and outside of Tiger and, and like Phil and VJ, like essentially dominating the world of golf. And like you say, Sean and Louie left, um, Gracie left, Sean and Louie were our last two major champions. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, someone's got to do something. Um, I know we've got a lot of youngsters um, playing DB World Tour now and, and kids coming through. So um, there's certainly a lot more players than there was back in Ernie's day, but yeah, it's have you played with that kid, Christo Lamprecht? I've not. I've met. I've met him. Uh, I mean, he's like six, seven, six, eight, whatever he is. But I think he's bigger than that. I think he's like six, eight, six, nine. Uh, if the listeners are, might remember British Open, I think he shot sixty six first round uh, as an amateur. Yeah, he's yeah. at. I don't. Is it Georgia yeah. Tech? I want to say maybe. Or what? yeah, Virginia, Virginia. Okay, Tech. Virginia Tech, and he's number two. So yeah, you guys got some number two in the PJ Tour standings. So you guys, t- PJ Tour, you, you guys got some guys Correct. coming up. There's there's a bunch of guys coming up. Um, and exactly, it's we're trying to follow in Ernie's footsteps. And no matter what, you guys have that accent. That accent plays over here. <laughs> well, I mean, I met my wife in college. Um, that accent certainly went a long way. Yeah. Then. Oh yeah. I, I mean, just a layup. That's you know, you're working. You got two or three extra points instantly before as it's, soon as you teed up this <laughs> high, right. bud. Right. Uh, have That's you nice. ever seen? Have you ever seen There Will Be Blood, the movie? I've not. No. Have you seen Gangs of New York? I've not. Okay. Seen so Gangs of I, New York what I'm getting at, what I'm getting at, is you look a lot like Daniel Day Lewis with that mustache, and I'm surely not the first person to tell you that. <laughs> so funny. No, <laughs> I'll have to check out the movie. No, <laughs> there will be blood. Is an epic movie. There's a scene where he calls someone a bastard from a basket. It's actually it's about like you know the oil tycoons in like the nineteen like nineteen oh five in in yeah. sort of Texas Oklahoma area. You got to check it out because you look just like him. That's too funny. I'll check it out. You got to uh, you got to tell me a little bit about South Africa because I don't I never been there. I don't know a okay. lot about it. I know and and just kind of the general comparisons like because when we went to. There's places we've been to that are completely different from anything here. You know, like Frankie, who's another guy on our show, just went to Rome for his honeymoon for two weeks and he came back and he's like a changed human. He's like everything about it's different. We went to Melbourne, Australia for the President's Cup four years ago. Yeah. And it was basically USA like South. It was almost identical, like same strip malls. They like basketballs, like all the same shit. What's where does kind of South African culture and everything? Where's that? Where's that stack up? big melting pot of various cultures you know we, we've got like 11 official languages um really but uh, yeah, oh, wow. yeah 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 but i think i think the biggest um similarity would be our love for sports okay right? even though it's different sport you know i mean we absolutely bleed rugby didn't you guys just win yeah bro we just won the world yeah. cup so that's like as, as big as it gets okay. for us okay and since 1995 when we won our first world cup nelson mandela used that to unite the nation okay because we're just coming out of apartheid um country is hurting people are hurting um and we win the world cup and nelson mandela and francho pinar our captain are lifting the trophy together right and people just come together and amazing and um fast forward what are we almost 25 30 odd years and the country's still struggling um different struggles a lot of it the same and they win a world cup again and our captain sia kulisi came from um you know extremely poor background grew up in a township um gets to go to one of the biggest um rugby high schools in the country and bunch of years later he's our captain and leads us to back-to-back world cups so completely unheard of insanely inspirational and it's like the country just comes together as one it brings so much hope so um yeah sports really this vehicle of like hope and inspiration um for a country that otherwise is still struggling with um hurts from the past economic struggles um 
and and trying to move forward. Wow. Who who are the other who are the fantastic goes a little history lesson too. Who are the other big dogs in rugby? Is it like New Zealand and Australia? New Zealand, New Zealand, Australia, historically, but they're really struggling. Like Aussie rules football is sort of taking over the whole country, right? So rugby is struggling. Um, yeah. England, France, Ireland. France and Ireland were, were picked to win this year's World Cup, um, and they fell out in the quarterfinals. The crazy thing about the World Cup was South Africa won the quarterfinals by points against France, the host nation. Like It was played in Paris, so they hated us, right? <laughs> So we beat them by one point in the quarterfinals. We beat England by a point in the semifinals. And we beat New Zealand by a point in the final. Like it was, dude, oh, man. my nerves, the last, the last like two weeks, like I've got nothing left in the tank. Yeah, you like, you have been on the, like a mo- <laughs> emotional roller coaster of yeah, all of like geez. this, yeah. this sort of fall of 2023. You'll never, you'll never experience probably a, a time like it again. Oh, uh, dude. This guy. I hope, I mean, I hope not. I'll take the highs, but the lows. Yeah. yeah this guy needs a trip to the beach. Oh, you yeah. just need like a, uh, I yeah, do. you need a pina colada <laughs> and a beach chair. For Are a you playing days. RSM? Pina colada. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm talking to Mitchell about it right now. Mitchell, my manager, and, um, and Feely. So um, we sort of making a call today or tomorrow. You have point. my favorite manager in world golf, I must say. Is that right? <laughs> he was a, he was a best man in Rory McIlroy's wedding. They're, he grew up in Hollywood. Like they're all they're all really tight. He's the man. He's that. the absolute really? man. Yeah. He's a good uh, he's a good guy. He's taken good care of me. So and I'm I'm 63rd in the FedEx Cup right now. Um, the, the win doesn't get me into the elevated event. So obviously. There's that little carrot of playing RSM and trying to finish top 60. And then on the other hand, it's like, I'm just done chasing, man. Like, I just won. Uh, I want to go home. I want to Yeah, especially with that being, I think that's the last event of the year. So there's just, almost a risk of like, if you if you play bad, it's like, well, you know, I, I'm going in off no momentum. If you just call it now, it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. my last event was a win. Maybe we just decided you're not playing. I don't exactly. Know. So. No, hundred percent. So I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out what we're gonna do, but yeah, we'll make a call here in the next day or two. Sweet. I think you just you just shut it down, like you said. You got some <laughs> That's things where I'm to, at. things to tend to, and and you just won. So it's real nice to just spend however much time kind of off, yeah. just being like, well, last time I teed it up, I shot eight under twenty eight in the back nine, and <laughs> birdie birdie <laughs> eagle, and one on the BJ tour. Um, yeah, you delivered one of the more emotional moments, man, that I can remember uh, in golf and hearing more and more detail about it. Uh, just under the circumstances, about as special of a thing as you can do. Uh, I think you come off like an incredibly good dude. Um, I can't believe you spent <laughs> 30 minutes with us now, you know, with everything going on and you've got kids and you're winning and all the emotions and everything. So, um, so yeah, it means a lot to us. I think you got a ton of people rooting for you. It was awesome to watch Thanks, you know, win that thing under pressure. So um very proud of you. I thought that was really awesome. Thanks, brother. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for having me. And yes, what a ride, boys. What a ride. We'll keep going. 